Hello, and welcome to the video about the fundamental theorem of calculus. Turns out I've been holding out on you for months now, because here we are, second semester, and we still haven't even learned the fundamental theorem of calculus. But we're going to do that today. So let's talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this is about integrals. I'll use the example from 2 to 3 x cubed dx. And we've already discussed what this notation means. It says, find the area under the curve of x cubed from 2 to 3. And in previous lessons, we've learned how to find this area using Riemann sums. We've created rectangles, either left hand or right hand or a midpoint, added up those rectangles, and found the area. But in this lesson, and what the fundamental theorem of calculus is useful for, is we can find the area exactly without using rectangles, without using approximations. So let's give the formula for this first before we look at this example. The fundamental theorem of calculus says if you want to find the antiderivative from a to b, if you want to find the area under the curve of some function, then it's equal to the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at A. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's go ahead and apply that theory here. So first, if we want to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, we need to take the antiderivative. And so we would say, we would use the reverse power rule, and we'd get x to the fourth over 4. And normally we'd write plus c, but since we know exactly the area we're talking about from 2 to 3, it's no longer necessary to write plus c. However, if you're doing an antiderivative without 2 and 3, or without numbers here, you will need to write plus c. Now, to evaluate this, you'll do x to the fourth over 4, that's reverse power rule, and then you'll need to write back these, num these numbers back in, 2 and 3. And this is reminding us of the rule for the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says, first evaluate it at 3 and subtract what happens when you evaluate it at 2. So you'll do 3 to the 4th over 4 minus 2 to the 4th over 4. So you'll evaluate it at the top end of the interval at 3 and you'll subtract what happens when you evaluate it at the bottom end of the interval, at 2. In this case, we'll get 81 over 4 minus 16 over 4. And the exact value of the area under the curve Let's try another example. Um, I, re I rewrote the fundamental theorem up top here that we can refer back to. Um, let's try to find the area under the curve from 1 to 3 of x squared plus 2 dx. So first, we'll just need to take our regular antiderivative. That's going to be x cubed over 3 plus 2x, just using the reverse power rule. And we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 3. First, we'll need to substitute in 3 and evaluate it at 3. And then it's going to be all of this subtracting what happens when you evaluate it at 1. So, the concept for this isn't too bad, but you have to be really careful with parentheses and very careful with your subtraction because you're really doing two things. You're substituting in 3 to the antiderivative and you're subbing in 1 to the antiderivative over here. Then after you evaluate that, then you'll subtract them. In this case, um, we can skip some of the math here and let's just get straight to the answer as 38 over 3. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's try this one. We want to find the area under the curve from 1 to 5 of x squared minus x. 
and dx to have our variable of integration. First, we'll start by taking the antiderivative in general is x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. That's using our reverse power rule. And all of this will need to be evaluated from 1 to 5. You start by plugging in the top part of the curve. That's f of 5 in this case. Here it was f of b, but we'll do f of 5, of course. So we'll plug in 5 cubed over 3 minus 5 squared over 2. And then we'll subtract what happens when you plug in 1. Because they did minus f of a, we're going to do minus f of 1. So we have 1 cubed over 3 minus 1 squared over 2. Clean this up a little bit. That's going to be let's see 125 over 3 minus 25 over 2. And that subtracts what happens when you plug in 1. Minus 1 third minus 1 half. A lot of a lot needs to go in here in order to calculate this. Um, you can change, you know, you can use the rules for subtracting fractions. Um, we're just going to go ahead and skip over this and simplify this to 88 over 3. Let's do one more example. We'll say from 0 to pi over 2 sine of x dx. We'll start by taking our general antiderivative. The antiderivative of sine x is equal to negative cosine x. You can find that in your notes from when we did the trig section. And we'll need to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2. We'll start by plugging in the top end of our interval. So we'll start by evaluating it at pi over 2. And then we'll subtract what happens when we plug in 0. Negative cosine pi over 2 minus negative cosine 0 will come out to being 1. 